In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the BCC Motion Tracker feature in Avid Media Composer. Okay, here we are in Avid Media Composer, and the first thing I want to do is show you the witness protection effect with the aid of Motion Tracker. Now, I've already rendered out the finished result for this filter. I'll show you that now. Okay, no prizes for guessing which man has been uh, witness protected here. Kind of ironic, since he's the only one with witness protection, he stands out the most. But all right, so we're going to uh, we're going to track this man's face and then protect it. Now you notice he goes off frame. I'm going to show you a little trick for how to maintain a motion path when something goes off frame like that. Okay, starting from scratch, going to delete everything. Hey, it looks like Bob Vila. All right, so let's uh, apply BCC witness protection to this clip. And the first thing I want to do is turn on the motion trackers track on the fly parameter. Okay, so what you do is you get this crosshair, and then you just move that over whatever you want to motion track. Now, if you're doing a face, you want to select the area of highest contrast on the face. And in this guy's case, that'll be his uh, beard or mustache and nose. So you want to track that area. Make sure you're at the start of your timeline, and then just do a uh, play every frame. And you can see that it's playing in pretty, uh, pretty good time. This is also gives you a chance to examine how accurate your motion tracking is. So you can see here the live update of the motion track, and this is where, of course, it started. Okay, now as he gets close to the edge of the frame, we might want to pay attention to what happens. Okay, so far so good, and we lost him. Okay, now don't freak out. Just stop the playback when he comes back. There he is. Now check this out. Just move your crosshair to where he is now and resume the playback. Oh, he turned his head. Now, because he turned his head, we have new features on his face to uh, track. The beard isn't going to do it anymore, so let's track his ear now and continue playing. Oh, perfect. Okay, so with just two or three manual clicks, we have a very nice... Uh, auto track on the guy's head. Of course, the default settings of this filter are blurring out everybody in his uh, immediate proximity, so let's fine tune the mask now in the witness protection filter. I can use these on screen controls, which are new to BCC7, and so I can shrink down the radius. The effect is set to blur by default. Let's go to the classic mosaic effect. Uh, let's also decrease the softness. So we see how big the radius really is. There we go. Scramble him just enough. Perfect. OK, now I'm going to hide these new on-screen controls. And let's see how that looks. OK, did a really great job hiding his face. Even when he goes off and comes back, it looks uh, pretty good. However, we can see his face for just a frame, like right there. Oh. Now, if this was like a really uh, high-profile person, you know, that wouldn't cut it. You'd really have to mask his face every frame. So check this out. I'm going to go back into the filter, turn on track on the fly again. I've got to turn on my crosshair again. And now I'm going to select his face and go back a frame. That's right. You can motion track backwards. Whoa, what is the world coming to, right? Okay, that should be enough. And that's it. So I don't have to track everything again. I can just track a couple of frames to get some patchwork done. So now he goes off, and he comes back on. Perfect. Now, if you really want to be a stickler for a clean-looking effect, you could take this one step further and actually keyframe the filter to disappear when he goes off frame. So you could do that by just changing the mix with original parameter here. So you could turn the whole thing off when he goes off and then back on when he comes on, but I'm not going to do that right now. So there's your first introduction to Motion Tracker. Very simple, right? Let's look at it in another filter. Okay, next we're going to look at BCC Match Move, and this time I've taken some footage myself, and as I scrub the timeline here, you can see a very nicely tracked uh, text and lens flare effect on this apple, and I'll show you how I did it. So again, I'm going to take off both effects and start from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is put the uh, text on there. So I'm going to load the match move effect, which is in the distortion category of filters. And I'm going to use motion tracker the same way I did last time. So I'm going to make sure I'm on frame one. 
I'm going to track on the fly. Now, obviously, the apple is way bigger than the target. So what I'm going to do is actually just make the target bigger. Sometimes when you have a really big object that's moving, that's just the easiest way to track an object, although this would slow down a machine with less processing power. Okay, so I'm just going to track on the fly, and I can cut to the chase this time, I think. Okay, and it's done, and that only took a few seconds. So I'm going to unselect track on the fly, and if I just scrub now, you can see that the uh, default placeholder has tracked the apple very well. Now, if I played this back um, in real time, you might see a few jitters in the motion. Now, one way you can get around that is to go into the smooth parameters in Motion Tracker. And you don't have to do them much. I'm just going to turn up the smooth motion to 2 to get a really nice smooth track on the object. You could also just try to track a different area of your object, uh, but this is probably the fastest way to get a smoother track. All right, the next thing I want to do is actually save this motion data. That's right, you can save motion data and apply it to other filters. We'll do that later. Okay, so we have this filter applied. Now we're going to get into how to use match move. It's pretty easy. Once you have your motion path, you just tell it what you want to put in the foreground. I want to use the first below. I've got this text here. And I want to transform the text so it fits on the apple. So I'm going to scale it down. And I want to be able to see through this background here. So I'm going to change the composite mode. So it has built-in compositing uh, capabilities. I'm going to use a screen effect. OK, so that's pretty good. I actually like that better than the rendered version I used. So I'm going to use that. And maybe shrink it down just a little bit more. OK, perfect. OK, so we have some of the background left on here. No problem. I'm just going to crop it out. Again, these are all built-in parameters. Ah, that's why I made it smaller the first time. So, there we go. All right, so that's nice, but we have these edges on here. That's not a problem either. We can just blend those in. See, we thought of these things. Okay, so we got a nice blended effect here. And now if you scrub through, you can see a cool-looking uh, text on moving object effect. Also, I'm not going to do this right now, but you could add a motion blur to your... Uh, moving image to make it blend in with your background more convincingly. That would really, you know, use some processing power, so I'm not going to do it here. Okay, so we got that, and it looks great. Now let's add the lens flare. So I'm going to use lens flare advanced, which is the newer of the uh, lens flares that we offer. And you can see it's a very uh, stunning effect here, OpenGL enabled for fast renders, which is good for a stacked effect. Now, check this out. Because this filter has the motion tracker built into it, I can save and load motion data. So I'm going to load that one I just saved. So we can see the motion path here. You'll notice that it didn't actually do anything right off. That's because when motion tracker is integrated, you have to tell the filter what to apply to. So I'm going to say apply to light source. And I'm going to hide that motion path. OK, now we can see that the lens flare is perfectly matched with the text and the apple. Now that's cool, but now we can't read the text. Well, we've thought of that too. If you go into the motion tracker offset controls, I can reposition the uh, anchor point, if you will, of the effect, but still keep the same base motion path. So now it'll still move with the apple, but with a different anchor point. OK, now obviously when I rendered the effect, it didn't look like this. So let's look at some of the presets in Lens Flare. Now you might be worried about losing your motion data, but don't worry about it. You can go through as many presets and change as many parameters as you want, and the motion data will still be intact. This is one bright, shiny apple. So if I wanted to uh, actually save some time, I'll just load the original preset I made for this, a very basic one. And there it is. OK, on to the last filter. And here we are at the final effect of the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to use corner pin to superimpose some video onto a moving background. So I'm going to play the result and see if you can identify what I have placed onto the scene artificially. 
I'm sure some of our more savvy video editors will spot immediately the object that has been placed onto the scene. It is, of course, this uh, for rent number on the silo. You may have just identified that a pure white sign on a rusty silo didn't quite make sense. And if you're really good at spotting things, you may have noticed that this window doesn't quite belong either. So, so this is what it does. It's like match move, except this gives you the ability to adjust for perspective. Okay, like this is a uh, rotating shot, so the perspective is changing. Match move wouldn't have been able to handle this. It would have been a flat object facing us the whole time, whereas corner pen will update and change the perspective of your uh, superimposed image or video. Okay, so enough talk. Let's get into it. So I'm going to take off the filters. There is one. There is the other. Corner pin works just like the other filters you saw today, with one slight difference. It actually contains four motion trackers, okay? Which makes sense. Corner pin and most of the objects that you would want to track will have four corners. So I'm going to do the silo first. Notice I'm selecting the uh, most prominent edges of the silo that I can. And it's going to be a little tricky on this side because they're so similar in uh, saturation and luminance. And if you have very difficult footage to track, we do give you the ability to track other channels besides luminance. So red, green, blue, and saturation are all choices. I've actually had good luck with this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and track luminance again. Again, I will spare you the render time and cut to the chase. Okay, and we're back. And I swear that took just about a minute. Really, no more than that. Okay, so gonna disable track on the fly. You'll notice that it automatically applies the, the video track it's on to the corner pin, which actually gives you a cool kind of like, you know, infinity and beyond effect. Uh, but that's not what I want to do here. I want to put a poster on here. So I'm just going to go back into the effect controls select the corner pin source and tell it to use the second below and there it is so even as I scrub the timeline just after the motion track you can see a really good tracking job there just like last time I am going to smooth the path out a little bit so going back into the uh, motion tracker controls gonna smooth this again two should be fine that's pretty good now I'm going to blend it in a little bit better to the silo, just like I did with the uh, apple shot. So I'm going to boost the edge width and softness. And this time I'm also going to use the light wrap feature, which gives uh, a little bit of blending in with the background. Okay, so there's effect number one. And effect number two, I'm just going to apply another instance of corner pin onto my clip. Now, talk about getting meta, right? So you could have motion track corner pins within videos of motion track corner pins and suddenly you're in the movie Inception. But we're just going to do this one more time and I swear that's it. So motion tracker one more time. Again, frame one of your clip. And I'm going to just track this little window or bordered up window right here. And as before, you've seen how the tracking process works. So I will cut to when it's done. Okay, and we're back, and you can see that the uh, corner pin has finished tracking and, again, has loaded the video as the default image. And this actually looks pretty cool. It's like a window into a mirror, or just a mirror, I guess. But uh, we want to put something else in there. So, again, back into the corner pin controls. I'm going to select the first below this time, which is where my window image is. Oh, and incidentally, here is what the... Uh, images looked like before they were corner pinned. Here is the for rent sign, and here is the window pane. Avid is doing some distortion on it here, but you get the idea. These were just regular images that have been distorted by corner pin. They weren't already designed to fit on this building. And there you have it. Now, if you wanted to make this effect even cooler, what I would suggest is that you look at some of our other filters like match grain and color match and chroma key even. And what's better is that you can actually download a free, fully functional trial version of our product at our website, and that's at BorisFX.com.